As Penny Lane herself said, famous people are just more interesting. And in this video, we are going to delve into the lives of those who dedicated themselves not to the pursuit of fame, but to the pursuits of the famous. The term groupie was coined back in approximately 1965 and is still used to describe girls who seek out musicians, whether for the love of their music or to satisfy their sexual desires. It has become synonymous with debauchery, glamour, decadence and intrigue, and though the groupie heyday belongs to a bygone era, the groupie dream lives on. Creating mystique seemed to be inherent to the culture, with many of the most infamous groupies establishing or being given alter egos in the manner of stage names. Sable Star, Sweet Connie and Cynthia Plastercaster, who was known for making plaster casts of the penises of the men she had been with, are just a few of those who laid the foundation for Cameron Crowe's Penny Lane, whose name is taken from a song by the Beatles. In this video, I'll be looking at the real-life groupie culture that was so prominent in the 1960s and 70s to understand why they still serve as such huge style inspirations, even over 50 years later. I will also be analysing Penny Lane from Almost Famous and will be taking a look at some of her most iconic moments and outfits in the movie. Penny typifies the music-loving, freewheeling attitude that we associate with the groupie idea. However, as I will discuss in this video, it was evidently a much more calculated scene than it may have originally seemed. Let's start by looking at some of the real women that served as inspiration for Penny's character. Crow himself has credited Penny Trumbull as being the main inspiration behind his fictitious Penny, but credit is also given to the likes of Pamela Debar and B.B. Buell, who had, by all accounts, far more prolific experiences with some of the world's most famous rock stars. In B.B. Buell's autobiography, she details experiences with Todd Rundgren, Stephen Tyler, with whom she has her daughter Liv Tyler, Mick Jagger, David Bowie, Jimmy Page, Rod Stewart, Elvis Costello and Iggy Pop, and, as told in his own autobiography, was also with Duran Duran's John Taylor in the 1980s. Pamela Debar, also known as Miss Pamela, has been very open about her many wild experiences as a groupie too, having been with Keith Moon, Jim Morrison, Jimmy Page, Don Johnson, Mick Jagger and Graham Parsons, to name a few. Whilst Bibi does not accept the groupie title, Miss Pamela is passionate about reclaiming the word. She believes that a groupie is someone who loves music so much she wants to be around the people who make it. A fan is content with an autograph or a look from the stage or a selfie. A groupie takes the next step and that takes a lot of courage. But they do so willingly, sometimes hoping for a romance or a one night stand or sometimes hoping to marry them. Pamela disagrees with the negative connotations that the groupie label grew to have saying that, I was the muse and I don't care what people say about that. Groupies enhance these people's lives in a huge way and if it weren't for us, they would not be who they are. This is in keeping with Penny Lane's role in Almost Famous, as we see her enabling Russell from Stillwater to come alive in her presence, but we'll go into this more later. However, by the 80s, attitudes to groupie life seem to be changing slightly, as John Taylor recounts that, the English press pointed out quite how many other musicians Bibi had dated before me. We broke up. This very much highlights the free love time capsule that was the 1960s and 70s, as a celebration of sex, drugs and rock and roll was at the forefront of society's consciousness. This is not to suggest that the 80s onwards became eras of prudishness, although the AIDS epidemic that hit during this era definitely altered views on the sexual freedom of the decades prior. However, the groupie lifestyle resonates with us again now, as sexual liberation and the eradication of double standards for women versus men is at the forefront of feminist discussion. Women such as Bibi Buell and Pamela De Barr acted with a refreshing freedom, refusing to be limited by the expectations placed on women by society. Style-wise, these women have become symbols of the hippie, flower-child-type fashion that we have come to associate with the 1960s and 70s. Both Bibi and Pamela would share clothes with the rock stars that they associated with, with Pamela saying that it worked because of the men's androgynous style and skinny frames. There are some interesting videos of Pamela discussing her wardrobe from this era that I will link down below, 
in which she recalls finding vintage pieces from the 1920s that became staples, as well as sewing her own clothes too. There is an eclecticism to groupy style, with fur, feathers, suede, fled silhouettes and mixed colours and prints, all adding to the fun and individualistic vibe that the women became known for. Penny Lane is seen to be wearing many of these types of items herself, and with that, let's move on to our Penny analysis. Penny Lane has become an iconic character, as watching her groupie journey allows for a certain element of wish fulfilment from the viewer, as we are granted backstage access into the closed-door world of debauchery and excitement. I will look at Penny in two parts, the confident, mysterious Penny that we are first introduced to, and then the more vulnerable, wounded Penny that is later revealed to us. We first see Penny through William Miller's eyes. William is an extremely gifted team, which affords him the opportunity to write for Cream and Rolling Stone magazines while still being at school. But he is very visibly an innocent, uncorrupted kid who is at risk of being swallowed up by the rock and roll world that he wishes to enter. Having struggled to fit in with his peers at school, William becomes enthralled with Penny, as she welcomes him into her group. She appears equal parts intriguing and glamorous, and is seemingly well-versed in the world of rock stars and partying, with this being entirely foreign to William. This places Penny in a position of power over William. However, Penny's power is called into question when we are made witness to her relationship with Russell. William's lens colours our view of Penny throughout the film, both when he is in awe of her at the beginning and as he begins to see through her facade. Initially, Penny seems infinitely cool and self-assured, fitting the mould of the muse as we know it. Pamela J. Barr's statement about groupies allowing stars to become who they are is very much applicable to Penny, as her love for Stillwater enables their egos and, unfortunately, their subsequent poor treatment of her. When we first meet her, we meet the performative version that she shows the world, so as to defend herself from getting hurt. Everything about her screams groupy, even down to her name being taken from a Beatles song. She embodies the groupy dream, seeming to thrive off hedonism and the illusion of freedom that being a groupie grants her. We see her command the room, with the rock stars, William, and all the other girls, all being enamoured with her confidence and charm. Style-wise, she has the trademark eclecticism that groupies are known for, wearing her iconic fur-trimmed coat, with this style colloquially becoming known as the Penny Lane coat in the fashion world, as well as colourful shades, knee-high boots, and varying frilly embroidered tops. This youthful, fun dress sense, when coupled with Penny's ability to rule a room, makes her an instant style icon. Groupies traded on their desirability, which is in part why we still want to emulate their vibe. Being wanted by men that are wanted by hundreds and thousands of other girls suggests a magnetism that seems possible to attain if only one adopts the right uniform and the right attitude. Penny fulfills her groupie role of loving the band, but it seems too steep a request to ask for their love in return, and this is when cracks start to show. In B.B. Buell's autobiography, B.B. reflects on the power dynamics in her relationship with Led Zeppelin's Jimmy Page. She stated that, I knew they could turn on me just as quickly as they could protect me. If Jimmy had said, get her out of here, I've had enough, I would have been gone as brutally as Laurie Maddox had been dismissed. I had no illusions about that. It's curious then that groupie fashion evokes an image of freedom to do what you want, when really it seems both in reality and in almost famous. You are allowing yourself to be at the beck and call of the band members that you love. There is a clear imbalance of power, which Penny is fundamentally aware of, hence why she tells herself to never take it seriously. As William grows closer to Penny, he starts to notice her vulnerability, as she fails to keep the emotional distance from Russell that she knows she should. Of course, nowadays, we can look back at groupie relationships, in which many of the girls were underage and can criticise them, as there definitely seemed to be an element of rock stars preying on the innocence of the girls. 
but back then, this was accepted and almost expected. There were fewer consequences for the band members than the groupies, and we see this with Russell and Penny. The development of the contraceptive pill in the 1960s did give women a newfound sexual freedom, but in Penny's case, she is only free to be with Russell as long as she is allowed to be, which isn't really freedom at all. Evidently, the groupie scene was slightly more calculated than it initially seemed to be, as the girls often seemed to be making sure that they played their cards right so as not to be dismissed by their rock star of choice. There is so much more that could be said about Penny's character and her relationships with Russell and William, but I don't want this video to get too long. I know I packed a lot in, so if you made it to this point, thanks so much for sticking around. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Penny, groupie culture, and the impact of Almost Famous in the comments, and I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. Thanks for watching.